To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. The Department of Health or DOH lauds the return of public trust in government immunization program, especially amid the ongoing outbreak of measles infection in the country. During an inspection earlier, Health Secretary Francisco Duque noted an increase in vaccination response in some barangays in Manila and Quezon City. Based on the latest data from DOH, measles infection has reached 4,302 cases and 70 deaths from January 1 to February 9 of 2019. The highest number of infection remains in the national capital region, followed by Calabarzon, Central Luzon, Western Visayas, and Northern Mindanao. Most of the patients were children aged 4 and below. DOH continues to urge parents to bring their children to the nearest health center for immunization, but stressed that anti-measles vaccine can only be given to children from 9 months and nine months of age and above and not to infants age zero to five months old. This should be followed by a booster when they reach 12 to 15 months. Yes, kasi mura pa yung kanilang immune system. No? At pangalawa, meron kasi uh, mga maraming pag-aaral na lumalabas. Meron silang natural uh, immunity. Not really immunity, but a protect, protection, yung immunoglobulin na uh, uh, IgG from the maternal uh, circulation pupunta sa bata as a uh, protective uh, antibody. Yun lang, yun lang ang solution natin. Isolation lang talaga kung meron na. And let the body uh, take care of its own. The Commission on Elections vows to implement strict monitoring as the official campaign period for the 2019 midterm polls begin. The campaign period for national candidates will start on Tuesday, February 12, and March 29 for candidates for local positions. Kamalek says that once campaign period begins, all campaign posters and tarpaulins should follow the proper size of 2 feet by 3 feet and should be placed in common poster areas designated by the agency. Candidates violating the policy will be charged of election offense and will be penalized under the Omnibus Election Code. The poll body has already implemented its Oplan Baklas together with the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority and the Department of Public Works and Highways to remove all illegal campaign materials. <music> Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to actively campaign for his preferred candidates in the May midterm elections during the campaign period. According to Malacanang, the president is set to endorse certain candidates of his choice aside from the ones he already vouched for, including former special assistant to the president Christopher Bongo, Francis Tolentino, and former PNP chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa. The Duterte administration has yet to release an official list of names on its slate for the 2019 midterm polls. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says that Duterte's support for candidates from different slates is not illegal and only means that he is voicing a personal choice. Panelo also ensures that no public funds will be used in the president's endorsement of his senatorial bets. The president, under the law, can campaign for or against candidate by reason of the provision under the law that political or officials by reason of their political offices can campaign. The rest, all employees of the government, AFP, police, cannot campaign for or against any candidate, nor can they use any resource of the government. In other news, active personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, and Philippine Coast Guard will now be able to avail 20% discount in all city and provincial public utility buses. This is after the Department of Transportation and several bus companies signed a memorandum of agreement which is in accordance with President Duterte's order to honor the heroism and sacrifices of soldiers, cops, and coast guards for the country. Uniformed personnel only need to present as valid identification as proof of active service to enjoy the special privilege. However, Land Transportation Franchising Regulatory Board Chairman Martin Delgar says that has not that that not charging fares on the members of the police, military, and coast guard has been an unwritten rule by the bus operators as a sign of giving due courtesy to these men in uniform. 
Delgar clarifies that they only formalize the system, but it is still up to the operators if they will impose fair charges on the uniformed personnel. When I talk to some of the bus operators, they were already saying that actually nagbibigay na kami ng mga tinatawag na seasons pass. We kind of formalize what has already been, what's happening on the ground in some of the places. A female Chinese national is facing deportation for throwing a cup of taho or soya pudding at a police officer who refused her entry in the line with a ban on liquids in the Metro Rail Transit or MRT Line 3. According to National Capital Region Police Office Director Guillermo Eliazar, they will recommend to the Bureau of Immigration to deport Jia Le Zhang for disrespecting a person in authority. Eliazar said her action is unacceptable, especially towards an officer who was just doing his job. Charges of unjust vexation, direct assault and disobedience to the person in authority have been filed against Zhang. The for her to be considered as uh, undesirable alien yes, so that the Bureau of Immigration could process this at maging base yan kung i-report yan. Meanwhile, Malacanang believes that the incident is an isolated case and must not be made into a bigger issue. The palace also called on four nationals visiting the Philippines to follow the country's laws, rules, and regulations. Foreign nationals who sojourn in this country should always behave Otherwise, they're subject to loss and deportation. We will not allow them to disrespect authorities or violate any law or ordinance in this country. Senator Panfilo Lacson vows to closely monitor the implementation of infrastructure projects this year that will be funded with the alleged pork barrel inserted in the 2019 national budget. Lacson says they will immediately peruse the 2019 General Appropriations Bill once its signed copy is returned to Congress. The senator claims the Congress has ratified the 3.757 trillion peso budget last week without completely removing the alleged pork insertions. Lacson wants to amend and delete the 160 million peso budget allocated for the projects of lawmakers, including those allotted for road development and flood control, water treatment, scholarship programs for students and feasibility studies in some provinces. Yung sinasabing insertion, dati nang nandun yun na niredistribute lang. Number two, kailan paper man? Eh, de, malapit na siguro yun kung eh, di ba gusto ni Presidente nga na ma-approve. So, it will be signed as a matter of course. But, the President, as we said, will be scrutinizing every phase, every provision of the budget. He, he wants to be sure that it is in conformity with the Constitution. And he will veto anything that he feels is not correct or irregular. Malacanang, for its part, guarantees to carefully examine the ratified 2019 proposed budget. And for the news abroad, a group of U.S. citizens gathered and formed a human wall at the border as thousands of migrants await permission to cross into Texas. Beverly Saison will tell us why. While thousands of Central American migrants wait to enter the United States, a group of U.S. citizens gathered on the border of El Paso to link arms and make a human border wall. The demonstrators gathered at the border where an existing barrier ends as they called for a wall to continue further. We are here to bring attention to that fact that there isn't a wall here, that we have to secure a nation and at the same time we are here securing the nation. All of these people will be able to live in peace because all the drugs and human trafficking that passes through here won't happen again. They will have to find somewhere else. U.S. President Donald Trump is slated to visit El Paso on Tuesday where he will host a rally. Meanwhile, security remained tight on the border further east near Piedras Negras where some 2,000 migrants have gathered as they hope to cross into Texas. The migrants are in a temporary shelter that is being guarded by military police in riot gear. 
Many are seeking passage into the United States, but some who have permission to stay in Mexico are considering working locally. We are going to wait here until they open the gate. They told us this credential was going to last five days per person. Cinco días por persona. U.S. President Donald Trump has hardened his stance on immigration and specifically against the caravan of migrants. He sought to suspend the granting of asylum to migrants who crossed the U.S.-Mexico border illegally, seeking fresh ways to block thousands of Central Americans traveling in caravans from entering the United States. He has also said any migrant seeking asylum will have to wait in Mexico whilst the claim is heard. Beverly Sison. UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak will go on trial at Kuala Lumpur High Court on Tuesday on charges linked to a multi-billion dollar scandal at State Fund One Malaysia Development Berhad or 1MDB. Najib was charged with criminal breach of trust, abuse of power and money laundering. He is accused of illegally receiving about $10 million of which was transferred into his account from former 1MDB unit SRC International. Najib's government set up by the 1MDB fund in 2009 and the U.S. Justice Department estimated that around $4.5 billion was misappropriated by high-level fund officials and their associates between 2009 and 2014. Najib has pleaded not guilty and has this consistently denied any wrongdoing. A group of doctors in Venezuela are urging embattled President Nicolas Maduro to allow U.S. aid shipments to enter into the country. Meanwhile, scores of civilians flee their homes amid fighting in the final Islamic State enclave in eastern Syria. Jovic Burmas tells us why. In Syria, civilians fled fighting between Islamic State and the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Force on Sunday in Syria's Deir al-Zor province. The besieged Islamic State enclave on the eastern part of the Euphrates River represents the jihadist group's last territorial foothold in the part of Syria, where the U.S.-backed forces have been fighting it. A member of the SDF-affiliated Tabqa forces said they were holding fire before advancing as civilians left the area, many of them relatives of Islamic State fighters. The United States said on January 29 that Islamic State was expected to lose its final chunk of territory in the area within a couple of weeks. In Spain, Tens of thousands of people waving Spain's red and yellow flag demonstrated in Madrid on Sunday to oppose any concessions by the government to Catalan pro-independence parties and to call for early elections. Demonstrators filled the Plaza de Colón in the largest protest socialist Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has faced in eight months in office. The opposition center-right and far-right parties called the rally seeking to make a show of force against Sanchez by capitalizing on anger with Catalonia's separatist leaders and the government's efforts to establish a dialogue with them. Around 45,000 people attended, officials said. And in Venezuela, a group of doctors demonstrated on the Colombian side of the border on Sunday as they demanded President Nicolas Maduro's government to allow humanitarian aid into their country. Venezuela's opposition has so far only publicly announced the arrival of aid in the Colombian border town of Cocuta, where it is now being stockpiled as Venezuelan authorities have made it clear they will not allow it to enter the country. Doctors at the demonstration said the food and medicine from the aid could be immediately used to befit their patients. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. The United States crashes out of the Fed World Cup group play for the first time after facing off with Australia in the semis. Meanwhile, the remains of Flamengo goalkeeper Christian Esmerio and nine other youth have been laid to rest following a deadly fire in the team's training center in Rio de Janeiro. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Ashley Barty won a pair of matches, first in singles play and then in doubles play, to help Australia knock off the United States and move into the Fed Cup World Group semifinals for the first time since 2014. Barty, who is ranked 13th in the world, helped her country secure a 3-2 win over Team USA Sunday. 
she rolled past Madison Key 6461 and partnered with Priscilla Han to win their decisive doubles match 6475 over Daniel Collins and Nicole Melcher. Elsewhere, Romania outlasted defending champion Czech Republic with a 3-2 win that came down to a decisive doubles round. The highlight of the contest was a 2-hour, 37-minute battle in which Romania's Simona Halep emerged with a 6-4, 5-7, 6-4 win over Czech Republic's Karolina Piskova. In the semi-finals, Australia will play host to Belarus which stormed past Germany with a 4-0 win. France also advanced and will host Romania in the semi-finals. The French posted a 3 win over Belgium, thanks in part to stellar singles play from Caroline Garcia, who enjoyed a 6 2 6 3 win over Elise Mertens. <laughs> Family and friends laid to rest the body of Flamingo goalkeeper Christian Esmirio on Sunday, one of the 10 youths killed in a deadly fire that tore through the team's training center on Friday. Those gathered applauded and sang the Flamingo anthem at the burial in Rio de Janeiro as many wept. The deaths of the 10 teenagers at the famous soccer club highlighted the precarious conditions many youngsters face as they chase the dream of becoming professional footballers. The boys, all aged between 14 and 16, were killed when a fire was sparked in an air conditioning unit and swept through the Flamingo Training Center on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. Three others were injured, one seriously. Ashra Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. A life-size Lego car and a pre-World War II Alfa Romeo fetch hefty amounts of money at a Paris auction. Let's find out why from Leslie Longboy. Paris auction house Art Curio sold a life-size Lego car for 95,300 euros or 108,000 US dollars in a sale on Sunday. The decorative Lego car jointly built by Renault and Formula One is composed of 330,000 Lego bricks over a metal structure. Patterned after the Formula One car of driver Nico Hulkenberg, it is equipped with Pirelli tires and a replica steering wheel. Proceeds were to be donated to UNICEF. Meanwhile, a 1939 Alfa Romeo Touring Berlinetta was sold at a price of nearly $19 million in the highlight of Art Curiel's Retro Mobile Classic Car Show. According to Art Curiel Managing Director Matthew Lamour, one of the hosts of the auction, the car is so special because of the technological features it boasts, including double compressors and an inline 8-cylinder engine. I'm here to look at uh, the sale of the Alfa Romeo that is from the Netherlands and I'm from Holland and it was just sold. It, it didn't bring the money that it should have brought in my opinion uh, as I'm working with RM Sotheby's, the other auction house, I think we, we could got of a more more money for it in America. It might even turn up now in the future in America. The car will now be passed on to its fifth owner, a collector in the US who made the purchase over telephone. Bravo. Other highlights of the show included a 1966 Serenissima Spider, which sold for more than double its maximum estimated price of 1.8 million euros. The success of the auction follows on the heels of last year's, which raised a total of 31.79 million euros. Leslie Lumboan, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news February 11, 2019. On behalf of Rina Vinyamor Camara and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.